Amazon Prime's Lord of the Rings spinoff show, The Rings of Power, and HBO's Game of Thrones prequel, House of the Dragon, both now out and both now have official numbers come out from Samba TV, and we're going to talk about those. See, this was one of the most anticipated head-to-head matchups this year on television for these two shows coming out just about a week or two apart. And again, like we said, we have those numbers, and the numbers are officially bad for Rings of Power. Well, welcome back, folks. Another great day here at Valiant Renegade. It's good to see everybody out there once again. And if you are like one of the many folks watching this video right now, and you're not yet subscribed to this channel at Valiant Renegade, please take a moment, hit that little red subscribe button, turn it gray, hit that like button, hit that notification bell, share this sucker out on the social medias, and of course, do leave a comment below the video before you head out the door today. The comments, the likes, the subscribes, all very important to the YouTube algorithms to make sure that the channel keeps growing. It's a big help, and I really appreciate everybody being here because, as we say, Valiant Renegade on this channel, we put the Hollywood through the business and financial lens of reality. And today is going to be a very good one or a very bad one in the case of Amazon. Let's dive in and see how we got here because we just got some fresh numbers from Sama TV this morning. And now we have something to compare to House of the Dragon on HBO Max. Now, in order to put the numbers from Sama TV between these two shows in good context, we need to take a little bit of a walk down memory lane here. And I want to remind everybody that Amazon Studios spent an amazing $250 million just to acquire the rights to basically the name the Lord of the Rings to use on this show and very little else. And then they spent another $1 billion reportedly that they have committed to making this show. And of that billion dollars, it was said that somewhere around 450 million of it alone was spent in just creating the first season. Of course, there's a lot of setup costs, the casting, the costuming, the set building, all of this done down in New Zealand. Now for season two, supposedly moving back to the UK to film there. Not sure why they didn't want to stay on location after setting all that up, but hey, I digress. But almost $450 million alone just to get this show off the ground and produce the first season. That is a ton of money for anything. That'd be a ton of money for a major motion picture or a trilogy of major motion pictures. This is for a television show. A lot was riding on this. And this article from Business Insider just a few days ago, late last week, Amazon insiders say it's $1 billion Lord of the Rings series will determine the company's streaming future. Quote, if we can't make it successful, why is Amazon Studios even here? Well, today we're going to find out whether or not that this show truly is what we could consider a success. Now, just to give you an idea of how desperate Amazon is to make this thing work, this from the article and from their unnamed insider at Amazon this show is expected to be a hit, but if it somehow misses the mark, several sources have told Business Insider the studio may face an existential crisis. Quote, the reason why it's going to succeed is because the executives at Amazon need it to succeed. If it doesn't succeed, there's going to be a big question from Andy Jassy and the board, said one former Amazon Studios executive. Quote, if we can't take this piece of intellectual property and make it successful, why is Amazon Studios even here? It has to succeed, this person added. There is no option. And that should tell you pretty much everything you need to know about what the Amazon Prime, Amazon Studios, public relations spin team has been doing in the last few weeks. I think they knew that based on the Google trends, especially when compared to something like House of the Dragon, which was definitely a direct competitor to this show, they saw the level of interest in Rings of Power was far behind House of the Dragon. And we've got numbers now to bear that out. So what did the Amazon PR spin team do? 
Well, they do what a lot of uh, PR spin teams do for shows that they don't think are going to perform well. They start blaming the fans. They call the fans racist or sexist or bigoted or whatever word you want to throw into it to basically denigrate the audience for having a lack of interest in the show that they've produced. It's not the fault of the audience for not liking a show that they perceive is going to be either bad or uninteresting. That's the fault of the people producing the show and the fault of the people marketing the show. If you can't market your product properly in order to elicit the highest amount of fan interest and therefore views as the show comes out, then you've failed at doing your job. Don't blame everyone else for not being interested in this show with the way that you attacked the very audience that you needed to make this show a success. Now, moving over to HBO for a minute, they didn't seem to have much of this problem, if any at all, when it came to Game of Thrones prequel House of the Dragon. HBO was very quick to come out and brag that 10 million people watched the series premiere on HBO and HBO Max. That's a combination of both their traditional linear cable and satellite HBO delivery system and HBO Max streaming. Now, those 10 million viewers came the night of the premiere. A few days later, they updated their numbers, claiming that the House of the Dragon premiere had been watched by 20 million viewers. They announced that on Friday, just five days, four or five days after the season premiered or after the series premiered the, the previous Sunday. Now, let's be clear. The 20 million viewers and the 10 million viewers from the previous article that they're referencing over that watch time of the first few days, those are U.S. households. Again, 20 million U.S. households, according to Warner Brothers Discovery, watched the premiere of House of the Dragon in the first four to five days. That is a massive number. That's the biggest premiere they've ever had on HBO. And again, that's just in the U.S., what was Amazon going to do? They would have to really come up with something amazing to try to beat that. Well, they tried. But if you read between the lines, you'd find out that it wasn't quite the same thing. Now, this also from a few days ago from Deadline Magazine, Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power Forge's biggest video premiere viewership ever for Amazon Prime. Now, certainly that is something that is respectable, and that is a great thing for Amazon. But as we talk about here on Valiant Renegade, quite often when it comes to bragging about biggest opening of this or the biggest record we ever set here, none of that actually matters. What actually matters is what the numbers were. Well, Amazon decided to give us a little bit of a glimpse into those numbers to try to actually have a good showing against House of the Dragon. But something was awry. From the article, Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power is the biggest thing Amazon Prime Video has ever done, and it looks like the TV series, based on J.R.R. Tolkien's writing, has delivered big time. Launching with two episodes in 240 countries and territories across the globe on September 1st, the J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay co-created Rings of Power snared more than 25 million viewers in its first day, according to Jeff Bezos. With some very big bucks behind Rings of Power, that global audience of over 25 million is the best and biggest premiere that Amazon Prime Video has had in its 15-year history. Now, to be sure, most people that have Prime aren't really using Prime for the video side, so let's understand that for a moment. But did you catch the fact that that 25 million figure that Amazon touted in the first 24 hours was a global figure? Not U.S. households. Not even North America, not U.S. and Canada, not even the Western Hemisphere, the globe. And they went so far as to tell us that that was available in 240 countries and territories around the globe. And all they managed to scrounge up was roughly two and a half times what House of the Dragon did just in the United States after the first few hours that House of the Dragon premiered. But. Again, it's hard to compare these because one streamer is saying this, another streamer is saying that, and we don't even really know what counted as a view for, for Rings of Power on Amazon Prime. Even the Wall Street Journal used the word sampled when it came to Rings of Power. So did a view really count as a true view when it came to the Rings of Power on Amazon? Or did anybody who clicked on the page and maybe caught the first 5, 10, 15 seconds, one minute, 
what did Amazon count as a view? You see HBO and HBO Max still run on a little bit more traditional system because HBO itself is still a linear delivered through cable and through satellite TV as a service. And it's much more easy to track because those things are captured more quickly by third party uh, monitoring systems like Nielsen. But we got numbers today from Samba TV. Now, we've had them for, for House of the Dragon now for about a week, but we didn't have Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power until today. And when you put those two numbers side by side, it gets scary. Now, I want to explain a few things about Samba first, because we've talked about that here on Valiant Renegade a number of times. And I will repeat what I've been saying now for months. Samba itself is an interesting metric to monitor, to see how a show compares to one another show. You see, but Samba TV still only captures what they can through their monitored smart TVs. It doesn't include things like mobile devices or maybe watching it on your computer. But most people still tend to watch these kind of shows through a traditional television system format because you still have things like Apple TVs or Roku's or Amazon Fire Sticks. Or you might be using an app on the television itself to watch these programs. But again, be that as it may, Samba TV reported that 4.8 million U.S. households in the first four days after its premiere watched House of the Dragon. That's a pretty good number. That actually beats out Stranger Things. Now, but again, HBO told us it was about 20 million people. So this is where the disparity comes in and how much we can trust what Samba TV is reporting as an ultimate figure. However, as I said, what makes Samba TV interesting is that we can use it to compare given the same type of algorithmic system that Samba uses to measure each and every show. We can kind of see how the shows line up compared to one another within the same measurement system. Now, again, Rings of Power needed this to be a big hit. Amazon needed a huge hit off this show. Did they get it? No. Using the same L plus three, that's launch date plus three days that they used for the House of the Dragon on HBO, Samba monitored 1.8 million households tuning in to the Rings of Power's premiere. And that was with the first two episodes. Again, as a reminder, 1.8 million over the same period of time for its premiere that the House of the Dragon got 4.8 million. That is less than half the audience that House of the Dragon got turned out for the Rings of Power. And that is a disaster for Amazon. That is a terrible, terrible start to a one plus billion dollar investment. Now, how does that compare to some of the other shows that we've seen more recently? Well, congratulations to Rings of Power. You managed to beat out She-Hulk by about 300,000 views over its first four days of streaming on Disney+. Plus. How about Lightyear, an absolute disaster at the box office that lost nearly $200 million for the Walt Disney Company? You beat Lightyear by 100,000 households over the same first four four or five days of streaming. They measure this in five days. So that might have actually been a little bit lower over the first four, but not by much. But congratulations, Rings of Power, you beat Lightyear. How about Stranger Things? Oops, nope, you didn't beat that. 3.2 million for Stranger Things Season 4 Volume 2's premiere over its first four days, L plus three on Netflix. But House of the Dragon sure did beat it. It beat it by about 50%. And no, it didn't even beat Doctor Strange's premiere on Disney Plus over its first five days. Back out about 100 or 200,000 for that, and it still managed to beat the Rings of Power. And hey, don't worry, Rings of Power. At least you still beat one show. So no matter which way you want to slice this, Amazon, this is bad news for you. Considering the investment that you've dumped into this, consider, considering the time that you've spent putting this show together for the last five years or so to get to this point, the extra hundreds of millions you've probably spent or going to spend over the course of time on this, just trying to market the show to get people to watch it, and for what? It's a good thing people sign up for those Prime memberships to get that free shipping, because it ain't for your TV shows. Hope you enjoyed the video today. Leave your thoughts in a comment below. Make sure you like and subscribe, and I want to hear from you. And until next time, take care.